Hey, what's up? It's Evan from PhotoExtremist.com, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you how to take high speed photographs of flour being thrown up into the air. Now, first things first are the materials. I just got regular flour at the grocery store, this big pack of it. I actually got two packs. There's different ways you can color it. But I just ordered this stuff called Holy Powder online, and this stuff is actually extremely, extremely saturated. Um, like if you were to rub it against your skin, it would just literally like bleed into your skin and make your skin extremely blue. So um, I got this in a, I ordered like a box of these, 16 different colors or whatever it was. I'll leave a link in the description. But they come in these little little packs and this really isn't enough powder to get anything cool so in order to increase your volume but still have some color what I did is I mixed in the holy powder with the flour so I took a big plastic bag dumped the flour in here then mixed the holy powder in until I got the saturation to just you know however you don't want it so it's just white but you want to get it so it's, it, you can still see the color but it's just not as colorful as that. So you can increase your volume. So you can see that there's much more volume. Now there was more of this powder in this bag, it's just that I used uh, most of it. Then after that, what you're gonna wanna do is get one of these dust pans. You can get bigger ones or smaller ones. I actually specifically got a big one just for this reason. Uh, but you could probably definitely try small ones and those would probably work just as well. But what I did is you can uh, dump your colored flour on this and just put different rows of color in here just just scatter it all around it just I put them in like different piles like green blue red now ideally you would want to be photographing this stuff on your own private property however I don't really have much space so I actually went to a elementary school and took the photos there at nighttime the thing about that is that the uh, it was actually very, very, very humid and damp and foggy, so everything was just kind of wet, um, including the ground. So you can imagine flour, when it mixes with water, it makes like a dough. So it was actually kind of challenging to sweep up the mess that we made. So try to do this on a dry night, not a damp one. Uh, you could be a jerk and just leave your mess at a public place, but I wouldn't re really recommend doing that. Next is the setup, and if I had to draw it out, basically I would be right here where the where I'm drawing, and then I would have a, a light right here hooked up to a wireless trigger. I was actually using a Einstein E640 uh, strobe on a battery, but you can use any speed light or any sort of thing like that, as long as it's a flash. And that was just aimed, you know, in this direction. And it was on a beauty dish. And the model would be about right here. And then to backlight the flower, I had about two strobes out here, kind of in the distance. And then they were aiming toward the model like that from behind. And those were also on the wireless triggers. You could also set those up to be slaves if you don't have a whole ton of wireless triggers. Then I had an assistant and what he would do is he would stand like right here and then he would just throw the flower from the dustpan onto the model that way. And sometimes he would also be like kind of behind the model, kind of down low, throwing it upward. Other times he would be kind of around here as well. We tried all different sorts of things. So, you know, he was around this area most of the time. What you don't want to do is throw the flower uh, from the front. That's not good. Don't do that. Because it will get in their face and everything and in their eyes and it just kind of makes everything messy. Throwing it behind is the way to go. Also, if you have two or more assistants, what you can do is have like an assistant over here and throw the flower that way. And then have an, another assistant over here and throw it that way. So you can get double the color, double the flower and get multiple directions if you if you have the luxury of two assistants. I only had one. The key is just to backlight everything. So if you only have one backlight, I would recommend placing it the opposite direction of your main light, your key light. So if your key light was like right here where this one is, just have your backlight 
on the opposite side of that key light. But if you have two speed lights, then that's even better. So that's what I did. The backlight makes everything really good so you can really see the powder. And backlighting also works very well with smoke, rain, snow, and powder. So with this one, uh, she had her head down at first with her hair down, and then we kind of just tossed the red flower on her hair. Then she flinged it up, and then I took the picture at just the right moment, and then you get this. It looks kind of cool, but what I wanted to do is actually just change the color so it looks even better, so there's more to look at. So what I did is I just created a new layer, went to the gradient tool, selected the angle gradient right here and then did the rainbow and then made the blending mode to I think it was either I think it was hue or I think it was color and then what you want to do is just make a gradient like that and then tone it down by toning down the opacity just like that and now you can delete the part where it's not in that ring. So I'll just like delete this part basically. So that's all normal color. And that's how it was basically done. Uh, and you just kind of lower the opacity to make it kind of blend in a little bit more. And it might have also been on hue as well. I'm not sure. I might have doubled up the hue. This one, I thought it was cool because we put the red stuff in her hair and it, it just looks like her hair is just kind of like fading in out like into powder because it's all the same color so those are also some ideas that would be worth experimenting with with this I really really liked this angle of how it just kind of crashed up against your head and how that angle was so like perfect right there so I and then I got the idea to um, kind of take that angle and make it parallel down here on the ground so what I did is I took the polygon selection tool and then deleted most of the ground around here but just kept that triangle there um, and then I kind of made some tonal adjustments uh, and then added some stars in the background and then you get this picture and I also made it blue around this um, square right here so this this middle rectangle is sort of like the inner frame and this outer black area is sort of like the outer frame but this but the powder is kind of going out of that so that's why it's kind of cool now also I wanted to point out really quick you can see the difference of the shadows here this shadow right here this was being produced by the speed light that was behind her over here and that speed light was just aimed in this direction you can tell because of the shadows going that way and then this shadow right here is where I had the beauty dish. Now notice how that beauty dish is not casting a really hard shadow. The shadow is very kind of faded. So that's the difference of the quality of light. Now you can use any sort of light. You can use an umbrella or a soft box. I just happened to be using a beauty dish because I felt like it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So if you like this video, be sure to sign up on the photo extremist email list on my website photoextremist.com. Also, if you like this video in particular, be sure to check out the trick photography and special effects video course that I have online for sale. Um, that'll be also on my website photoextremist.com. And a special announcement, there's a new course that is coming out by the end of this month so be sure to sign up on the photo extremist email list to get notified for that. Um, so that'll be it. I'll see you in the next video.